Courses are plugged to carry out conventional core analysis and special core analysis. Core plugging process is done by cutting cylinder shaped samples by using a special kind of pins with length from one to one and a half inch. The rule of thumb is that a sample for special core analysis and conventional core analysis should have a length equivalent to one or two times the plug diameter. Usually core lab do plugging as per company instructions. Standard is generally one plug per foot. So the core lab technician pick up a plug at each foot along the core. Sometimes the company shift of the one plug per foot standard and that depends on the reservoir quality, core length and core status and of course the budget allocated for core preparation process and analysis. However, the core for the plugging technician is just a piece of rock but for you as a geologist or a geoscientist is a valuable piece of information that should be selected carefully and professionally. So your duty as a geoscientist or a geologist in the core lab is to provide guidance and support on plug selection so that outcomes will be consistent and in line with company instructions and serve reservoir studies objectives. So what you need to do is the following. Number one, plug location marking. Guide the technician on plugs depth selection. It's the depth where you want plugs to be extracted along the core. You will be targeting the depths where plugs to be extracted by marking cross with circles like this. Plug selection depends on reservoir quality and heterogeneity. The characteristics that should be considered during selection process is hydrocarbon shows, layer thickness if in case of multiple layer reservoir, type of faces, type of porosity, permeability, rock texture, fluids contact depth, diagenesis and sequence boundary. In addition to that, plug selection also depend on the objective from the analysis examples for reservoir quality evaluation or for formation damage study or for shell interval compaction and etc. Plug selection must target areas of interest such as intervals of saturated hydrocarbon or good reservoir faces which are characterized by high porosity and permeability or intervals which represent potential seal for hydrocarbon flow either horizontally or vertically such as shell or clay or anhydrite or any digenetic or digenic uh, mineral like calcite cement or quartz overgrowth etc. Number two plugs quality. You need to emphasize on plugs quality in terms of size, shape and surface topology. Larger plugs is preferred for both conventional and special core analysis since errors involved in the porosity and saturation me measurements on small plugs can be large and can have a significant impact on the data. For example, the pool volume of a standard one and a half inch plug is about four times greater than the pool volume of typical one plug for the same porosity. Plug shape and surface topology can have a significant impact on porosity and capillary pressure measurements. While plug length completely control two phase flow behavior in relative permeability testes. Number three, direct technician on plugging fluid to be used. For a plugging process, it's preferred to use brine or synthetic formation water, which is made up to the same composition of the formation water. But there are, but there are certain cases where brine formation water cannot be used for plugging if the plugs are taken for RW analysis or DS analysis. In addition to that, plugs should never be taken using tap water as this can result in sample alteration if the core contains reactive clays or soluble minerals. In case of brine rock incompatibility, where the formation water composition is unknown, or in cases where the cores are cut using oil-based mud, then depolarized kerosene or oil-based or oil mineral can be used. Number four, plug trims preservation. Trims are the end parts or the extra pieces of the plug they represent good materials for further analysis such as microscopic analysis and clay minerals. Ask the technician to preserve these trims for thin section preparation so to be used in microscopic studies or petrography. 
Microscopic analysis, analysis usually carried out to identify microfaces, porosity, texture, composition, and uh, composition or the main components of the rock, minerals, and diagenetic processes. Number five, plug orientation. You need to imply the orientation of the plug. It's a state of of art that plugs must cut horizontally parallel to apparent bedding plane of reservoir layers as we can see in this figure the objective is to sample the maximum permeability in the formation which is normally parallel to the bedding of the reservoir for horizontal plugs the samples should be ideally taken from the center of the core, not off on, on both sides, to, uh, and this is to minimize the influence of mud solid and filtrate invasion. This is particularly particularly important for special core analysis and formation damage test plugs. Uh, let's say that we are looking inside the, this core sample from above in a plane view. Okay, so what we see, it, so what we see here, is the uh, this is our plug in the center it should supposed to be taken from the center, and the gray area here around the uh, around represent the uh, mud filtrate or the invasion area that developed uh, during the uh, cooling process uh, in the borehole. So to minimize the impact or the effect of the mud infiltrate or mud invasion area on the plug quality it's preferred to be extracted from the center of the core sample vertical plugs too are essential for reservoir studies they are typically used for rock mechanic tests and routine core analysis they represent key information in your porosity permeability system such as in carbonate reservoirs the vertical plugs are taken usually taken perpendicular to the maximum depth of the bedding plane also they should be cut as close as practicable to the location of the horizontal plugs to allow for comparative data sets for conventional core analysis vertical plugs allocation is preferred at good reservoir faces and faces sharp contacts and above and below sequence boundaries as you can see here in this example of a sketched core sample, we see the vertical plugs is taken here at good reservoir faces or at the sharp b b below or above the uh, sharp contact between, uh, between, between faces or at sequence boundary uh, below and above the sequence, bound uh, sequence boundary. Sequence boundary uh, is defined as a chronological surface that uh, separate two different geological phenomena uh, occurred in uh, different times. Uh, why uh, it's important? It's impo why sequence? Uh, it's important to t to take vertical plugs below and above sequence boundaries. Uh, uh, as we know, hyperdrains or superpermeability intervals associated with bugs formation in carbonate reservoirs uh, are usually developed uh, as a result of surface exposure. So a sequence, bo a sequence boundary, as we can see in this uh, real core exam uh, example, sequence boundary. Uh, so the vertical plugs uh, can provide valuable information about the vertical permeability or vert uh, vertical permeability variation over and below the sequence boundary. So that's why we need to uh, take uh, pl uh, vertical plugs above and below the sequence boundary. Don't forget to mind fluid contact during plugging. The plugging process is more likely to be done in hydrocarbon reservoir intervals, which is the target for production and development. In addition to that, you, we can, you, you can take plugs from the transition zone. Uh, the area below fluid contact is 100% water, so it's of minimal importance compared to area above fluid contact unless there is certain conditions and plans from the company to study the aquifer conditions and the petrophysical system then some samples can be selected and guided by the company 
instructions for uh, maximum plug numbers and orientation vertical or horizontal number six bit penetration you need to mind the depth of, pen of bit penetration for horizontal plugs especially in cases of thinly bedded or laminated core sections like we see in these pictures uh, the bit must drill right through the entire core to prevent damage when releasing the plug so let's assume this is a projection for inside this core sample and we are penetrating this uh, we are penetrating this uh, spot here and this is the direction of the drilling bit to extract the sample from up from top to bottom uh, the penetration must be complete from start to an end so the plug sample can be extracted intact and complete without being damaged uh, during releasing so uh, if penetration was incomplete like we see here if it stopped in the middle or somewhere and the, uh, the, the and we extracted the sample out during releasing it might get damaged or broken or broken so you need to inform the technician about the depth of thinly bedded or laminated or non hard uh, or even non hard uh, core sections to mind this uh, uh, this procedure special core analysis include capillary pressure relative permeability and wettability your task as a geoscientist is to select plug samples or select one food core sample which is more preferred for special core analysis you can pick these samples at certain depths such as interval of saturated hydrocarbon uh, gas uh, fluid contacts and transition zone guided by will log uh, sometimes company requests for even full length core analysis in cases of complicated petrophysical system of, of the reservoir where porosity and permeability are associated with the fractures or solution bugs in these cases the volume of individual pore spaces may be very large compared to plug sample size however for one foot core sample or even full length core sample you need to ask the technician in charge of plugging process to cover the saturated sample with wax so to preserve the original fluids inside the reservoirs uh, the core sample after cutting now to make your visit to core lab more exciting and useful for your experience bring the following with you number one bring a geological map that enables you to see the location of the core well relatively to the surrounding wells as we see in this map uh, is it, uh, and check is uh, check, check the location of your core well is it near or off or away or off fault is it located up dip or down dip the structure etc you will be able to make synthetic interpretation and speculations about the events that you have seen in your core such as the presence of fractures after you had seen that the core well is located near fault for example and bring will log section including gamma ray and porosity it's good experience to bring along will log section to correlate reservoir characteristics such as the thickness and thickness and faces with the surrounding wells the most common logs used is gamma ray and porosity gamma ray is used for thickness and lithology correlation and porosity for general petrophysical properties lateral and vertical variation correlation and also porosity is used for locating plugs uh, and one food core samples for conventional core analysis and scale also there's no problem if you pick up your geological lens or buy one to you will need it to examine texture of some samples especially at intervals of interest or to see microfauna if the reservoir is carbonate this will help you to understand your reservoir composition and ethology HCL or uh, uh, HCL bottle is usable at core lab to identify calcium carbonate minerals which is the main composition of carbonate rocks if you don't have one then you can ask for one when you are at the lab and finally a notebook to write your comments and make sketches is necessary uh, get a notebook of medium size not big not small while you are at the lab get involved in the discussions and provide support at need direct and recommend you should know that every piece of information you will learn during your visit will pile up and 
form part of your experience which is your treasure in the future be sociable and open for discussions be problem solving oriented and don't forget to write down all the notes during your visit because you might be asked to provide a report after coming back from the visit and one more advice be keen to leave a positive impression during your visit because one of your team or one of those who accompanied you to the cool lab might be your boss or your manager as part of his or her concentration will be on your performance during the visit not only on the cooling process especially when you are a new geologist in the team so thank you for your time watching the video and enjoy your next journey to the cool lab apply what you have learned and provide me with your feedbacks in the comments below and until i see you again with a new skill from geoscience skills channel keep on learning geoscience skills thank you for keeping learning